The news and the media show that the tyrannical regime reigning in Iran is behind many of today's crises and wars. This religious dictatorship not only suppresses violently the people of Iran, but it is also a real threat to the Middle East, to Europe, and to the peace and stability in the world. While the policy of appeasement towards this regime by some Western democracies continues, the only force standing up to it is decades all Iranian resistance. We need only to look at the life stories of its members and supporters who have paid and continue to pay a staggering price for this long struggle, more than four decades of relentless struggle against this militaristic and corrupt state have only strengthened their ranks and bolstered their determination. They have taken and continue to take an important part in demonstrations and revolts, forming resistance units, the freedom fighters that are increasingly active in Iran, attacking the symbols of the dictatorship. In direct confrontation with the firstly misogynistic theocracy, the resistance movement presided over by Mrs. Maryam Rajavi with her exceptional leadership qualities and led by several thousand dedicated women has constantly pushing forward and creating a succession of victories. The massive and active presence of women in the movement is an unprecedented experience, a precious asset for the women's movement in general and a priceless treasure for the emancipation of Muslim women. Let's remember that women are undoubtedly the essential force for change in our time. And the victory will belong to those who don't give in to violence and always remain on the right side of history. Thank you for being on the right side of history. And lastly, I would like to express my admiration for the men in the resistance, my brothers, who fully accepted the leadership of women. Thank you very much. Uh, dear distinguished guests, dear Ms. Rajvi, uh, I'm Asal, I'm a 20-year-old student and a human, right, um, human rights act advocate for Iran. Uh, even though I was born in Iran, uh, I grew up in Luxembourg. Both my parents were political prisoners in Iran uh, because of their po political activities after the 1979 revolution. And during their imprisonment, um, they, they witnessed the uh, atrocities of the mullahs with the countless of executions of their friends, including the execution of my uncle, who was only 23 years old. As of right now, the history is repeating itself in the same prison walls that they were once in. Since uprising in 2022, there have been um, over 30,000 incarcerated due to resistance against the regime, with over 800 executions in the last year. Recently, we've seen an inc incomparable kind of bravery from young women and men on the streets of Iran who have formed resistance units and are feared by this very brutal regime. We would like to tell you that my generation is standing by them in full support and we will do everything uh, to be their voice. As we have all accepted our duty 
to support our people in their struggle for freedom, um, the European Union has also to acknowledge their duty in regard to the Iranian struggle. The solution remains clear. We must listen to the voices of the Iranian people resounding through the streets, chanting for a regime change. There can be no compromise, no appeasement, no more soft talk. The European must take meaningful action. Dear Ms. Rajavi, you have inspired this generation and many women in Iran to never give up when you say we can and we must free Iran. This is our collective responsibility and we are proud that the democratic Iranian resistance shows a great example of women leadership in this very challenging struggle. Thank you. Thank you very much, distinguished guests, MEPs, and dear Madam uh, President-elected Maryam Rajavi. My name is Neda Amani. I'm an Iranian human rights activist from Switzerland, and it's an honor for me today to speak before you and share my experiences and dedications to advocating for the youth, especially for the Iranian girls and women in Iran. As the daughter of a former political prisoner whose body still shows the scars of the, of the atrocities, atrocities committed by the Iranian regime, I've been confronted with the challenges and dangers faced by people in my homeland, homeland from a very young age. As announced, I'm also a football goalkeeper coach and address the everyday discriminations and challenges that young women in Iran face in sports on a daily basis. However, today I'd like to talk about a different topic that I've been asked so many times by many of the, of the hundreds of politicians I've had the privilege to meet over the years. What is the solution or the alternative to this regime? How can we help the girls and the women in Iran? So to answer these questions, I'd like to give you first an understanding why resistance is so important for the girls and women in Iran. So why resist? Bertolt Brecht, an influential German writer once said, when injustice become, becomes justice, resistance becomes a duty. So first of all, we should all understand the environment in which Iranian girls and women live. They are not only subjected to everyday discriminations or domestic violence, but are also legally disadvantaged and confronted with a regime that denies and suppresses women in their fundamental existence. And also understand that this struggle uh, of the Iranian women for their rights did not just begin with the, with the theocracy, uh, but is a roughly 120-year-old struggle against the monarchy, patriarchy and the misogynistic mullahs. So therefore, the only way out for women in Iran, if they want to be heard and seen, is through active resistance. However, to truly understand Iranian women, it's urgently necessary to listen to them. For years, they've been communicating with us in various ways, whether it's Mariam Akbari Monfared with her letters from prison, who has been in prison for over 15 years now without one day of leave simply because seeking justice for her brother's deaths after the 1988 massacre. Or Zeynab Jalalian, a Kurdish political prisoner who has also been behind bars for just as long. Or more pre prevalent and current, the girls and women from the resistance units who are at high risk of being arrested daily because they ride women resistance freedom on walls and hang posters on the streets. These girls and women now no, know that they must pay the highest price for freedom so that, the, that others don't have to suffer the same fate. And it's exactly these individuals, individuals who should be at the forefront of every politician's mind when it comes to the topic of Iran. Now, what can MEPs do in this case? First, firstly, it's important to guarantee the self-defense right of Iranians according to Article 51 of the UN Charter, which states that everyone has the right to defend themselves when disproportionate violence, as seen in all previous uprisings, is used. It should be clear to everyone that this regime will do everything in its power and will continue to do so to discredit and defame the genuine Iranian resistance and in its power and alternatives. Therefore, it's even more important to support 
and democratic forces, as well as the NCRI and president-elected Mariam Rajavi's Rajavi with their 10-point plan. So going back to the code of Bertolt Brecht, it's not only the, the duty of the Iranian girls and women to resist, but rather for us to acknowledge the Iranian resistance. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. I would like to say a few words about use of misinformation through justice by the Iranian dictatorship. In August 2023, the Iranian regime declared its intention to prosecute members of the principal opposition, the MEK, along with 104 affiliated individuals, including several women, on charges of terrorism. Not worthy is the fact that these individuals have been residing outside of Iran for several years. There are several factors that compelled the dictatorship to orchestrate this scheme after more than four decades. These factors include the increased activities of the MEK, particularly during the uprisings of 2017, 2019 and 2022. The heightened efforts of resistance units nationwide to organize protests against the regime and the political and legal activities of the Iranian resistance to end the immunity of government leaders involved in major crimes, particularly the mass execution of political prisoners in 1988. This surge in activities has attracted a significant number of youth to these resistance units, including an important number of women, raising serious concerns for the regime. Authorities and government media assert that the trial's purpose is to deter the youth, the youth from joining the MEK. The power aims to use the trial to remind them of historical events, hoping to slow down the trend of youth joining the MEK. Needless to recall that the judicial system of this regime is in no way compatible with the recognized international legal norms. The decisions thus made cannot serve as the basis for any legal action in countries where the rule of law prevails. In Iran, fundamental principles of criminal proceedings, such as the presumption of innocence, the right to defense, etc., are not adhered to. As you may know, sexual discrimination is a cornerstone of the Iranian judicial system. Women lack the right to adjudicate with their testimony valued as half that of men. Systematic sexual assaults, particularly against women, occur as a form of torture in Iranian prisons, among other violations. As a lawyer, I would also like to recall that the Iranian Bar Association was one of the organizations systematically suppressed in recent years. Numerous lawyers affiliated with the MEK were executed. Revolutionary courts repeatedly revoked the licenses of lawyers who did not align with the dictatorship's ideology. Eventually, the bar turned into an official government apparatus. Currently, dozens of lawyers, including women, are being detained for defending participants in the uprising of 2022. It is also interesting to know that in the same courts where they have initiated proceedings against the MEK, the main appointed lawyer is a functionary linked to an infamous suppressive organ. Thank you very much. I'm happy to and Mrs. Mariam Rajavi. Uh, my name is Roya. Since childhood, I have been in, uh, intimately acquainted with the repressive nature of Iranian regime. My father, a supporter of the PMY, endured uh, seven years of imprisonment under the Mullah's regime for his activism against their oppressive rule. Iran stands as one of the largest prisons in the world, yet its people have never covered, um, cowered in the face of dictatorship. I take pride in witnessing young girls like myself leading protests in my homeland. They draw inspiration from courageous women within the PMY organization who stand at the forefront of the largest opposition movement. These female champions of distance send a clear message to the world. They oppose all forms of tyranny, whether mon uh, monarchical or religious tyranny. 
and they aim to dismantle the entire regime, chanting slogans like death to the oppressor, we their king or leader, and death to Khamenei. Over the past 44 years, Iranian women and girls have played a pivotal role in the fight for freedom, enduring torture, imprison imprisonment, and even execution. Today, we witness women from diverse backgrounds ushering in a new era of resistance against the misogynistic mis Mullah's regime, rallying under the slogan, Women, Resistance, Freedom, their, voice, their voices echo the se uh, sentiments of every freedom-loving Iranian woman. They, seek, uh, they speak for those who endure the most hentious tortures and even gang rapes within the regime's prisons. For female students facing rentless pressures and for those entrapped by poverty dr driving uh, corruption. Together, we join in the chant of women resistance freedom because of the leadership of Maryam Rajavi. She has shown us that we pose, possess the cap capability and obligation to overthrow this regime, this corrupt and destructive regime, replacing it with a free and democratic Iran where women actively participate in all aspects of society and hold political leadership roles. The slogan, can and must, is not merely a hope for us. It serves as a roadmap forged by the women of Iran's resistance over the past 44 years. Hand in hand, we will continue this journey until we reach the victory and secure the freedom of our country. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the esteemed European Parliament, and dear Mrs. Mariam Rajavi, my name is Sarah Sutudamaram, and I was born and raised in Sweden. Despite this, I've been actively advocating for human rights in Iran, particularly for women's rights, almost all of my life. My parents have been imprisoned by the Iranian regime for several years and have been subjected to torture, leaving them with enduring physical and psychological scars. For the past 21 years, my older sister Sona has also been courageously stood in the forefront with fighting for freedom and democracy alongside thousands of brave women in Camp Ashaf 3, which is a symbol of hope and dedication for all of us. In my conversations with people living in Iran, hopelessness, compulsion and oppression are recurring themes, which is fueling my own determination to continue our shared fight for a free Iran. The Iranian people are capable of shaping their own destiny. They desire freedom and democracy and not a return to another form of tyranny, namely monarchy. If anyone claims to support the Iranian people in their struggle, they must also support their own right to determine their own future. I would also like to express my solidarity with the Iranian resistance units in Iran that are operating on the ground and this is the biggest threat to the Mullah's regime, but also the biggest hope for the people of Iran and all of us outside of Iran. Together, we reject all form of dictatorship, whether it's wearing a crown or a turban. I would also like to express my gratitude to all of you to, that are gathered, gathered here today to support the Iranian people. And I have no doubt in my mind that the people of Iran will overthrow the Iranian regime, but we must also stand with them and support them in their fight. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the European Parliament, dedicated advocates for freedom and human rights, and dear President-elect Mrs. Mariam Rajavi. My name is Sepida Orafa. I am a 28-year-old political scientist from the Netherlands and the proud president of the Iranian Dutch Youth Association. I was born into a world far removed from the turmoil and tragedies that befell my family in Iran. My uncle, just 18 years old at the time of his arrest, fell victim to the regime's brutal 1988 massacre. My aunt and her husband faced a fate no less cruel, executed at gunpoint within the sanctity of their own home, leaving behind two children, one of whom, burdened with a handicap, 
was robbed of the nurturing love of her parents. These stories are not mere footnotes in my family's history. They are stark reminders of a reality that afflicts millions of families across Iran. As I navigated through life in the free and open society of the Netherlands, a question often lingered in my mind. Why was I granted this freedom, while countless women and girls back in Iran are denied their most fundamental rights? Rights to speak, to dress, to love, and to live as they choose. Basic human liberties that were taken from them under the guise of law and order. In the face of such injustices, silence is not an option. The Dutch-Iranian community, in collaboration with the PMOI, transforms our collective historical grievances into a potent force for advocacy of human rights. Together, we engage with members of parliament, mobilize the younger generation, and stand against policies that are designed to maintain the economic lifelines that bolster the Iranian regime at the expense of its citizens. Amongst the beacons of hope in our struggle is the 10-point plan proposed by Ms. Maryam Rajabi, the president-elect. Her vision for Iran's future, a future grounded in democracy, gender equality, and a separation of religion and state, resonates with the core values we hold dear in the European Union. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom is not merely our right. It's our privilege and our responsibility. When we stand idly by, we diminish its value. In this esteemed gathering, I urge the European community to look beyond the, di the diplomatic facades and trade interests. Let us collectively amplify our support for the Iranian people, for the women leading the charge for change, and for the youth who dare to dream of a free Iran. Together, let's not only envision a future where human rights are upheld in Iran, but actively contribute to its realization. Thank you for, your, for lending your ears, your hearts, and your support to this noble cause.